Welcome back to Mad Props. This is episode 71 of Mad Props, riding solo dolo again. Um, we've been seeing good reception from these solo episodes. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for um, tuning in and all that stuff. Thank you for engaging and all that. We really appreciate you doing that. If you want to get in on the conversation, check us out on social media at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Or you can go to Schnabel Studios on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. You can subscribe and like on YouTube, um, LinkedIn, and I think I said them all. I think that's all of them. I don't remember. But anyway, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok. Like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. We've been doing a lot more different things, different categories, a lot of baseball episodes, new baseball episodes will be coming out. Those have been very popular, and I want to continue um, doing those, so... Keep, keep an eye out for those. Last week's episode was a throwback with Hannibal Burris when he came on WNHU with me, uh, Joe Brown, and Chris Millay, who nobody knows. He's never been on this podcast, but he was on that as well with us. Um, so that was a good interview. I'm glad people tuned in and, and listened, and thank you guys for listening to that. This episode is going to be about hip-hop. Now, for people that don't really know, I am a, a big hip-hop fan. I've been... A fan for a long time, um, not my whole life. I didn't really enjoy hip hop until I got into high school, and then I started getting more into it, which is funny because I feel like so I was in high school in like 2009, 2010, 2011. So eight, nine, ten, eleven was my high school years, and it was kind of like a down era for rap and hip hop. There were a lot of guys that didn't stick around. The the big guys. I mean, 2009 was a big year because you had, you had Recovery, you had the Blueprint 3. I think Rebirth came out around that time as well. Um, so you had some of the big names dropping, like Eminem, Jay-Z, Lil Wayne. T.I. had, um, pa not Paper Trails, uh, what was the other one? With All She Wrote on it and, and had some good songs on it. Um, but the really, it was more about the guys that aren't really around anymore. Um, <laughs> that you don't really hear from anymore. Um, but it was also the come up of a couple of people that are now like kind of the old heads in the game, like the Big Sean's. That's kind of when 2 Chains was getting ready to pop off. Um, so it's kind of like the in-between. It was the in-between era of the guys from the 2000s kind of wrapping up their dominance and the guys that would go on to dominate the 2010s kind of emerging like that's when drake was young which we'll get into that in a little bit that's when kendrick is young again we're gonna get into that in a little bit uh big sean two chains trey songs um guy came and think of came and think of other meek mill that's when all these guys were kind of coming up and getting ready to to pop off so that's kind of my high school era um that's where i started to get into hip-hop uh eminem jay-z nas tupac biggie uh, T.I., Luda, those were the ones I really got into at first, and then I kind of divulged myself into it and really, really got into it, especially then I got into college and met Kyle, and then it hit a whole nother level of love. Um, so it's been something that's been big in my life. Music's just big in my life. So I want to dedicate this episode to hip-hop because there's been a big hip-hop story brewing, although it's been a while since we've heard anything from it. But Kendrick Lamar versus Drake the biggest rap beef in a long time um, has been going on. I think it's over at this point. Um, we'll get more into that. I'll kind of discuss what I think of the beef, what I think of the songs. Um, I had them down in front of me, but I lost my page. So I'll probably have to look up the names of the, uh, of the songs again, because I don't remember what the names of the songs are off the top of my head. But we'll go over all that. Um, I will start it off by saying I think it's, I think it's officially done now. I, I don't think anyone's going to respond, but we'll get more into that. I also have a list. We'll probably start the show with the list, um, and that's going to be really fun as well. But before we get into all that, before we do anything, I want to thank everybody for being here. It's been a tough time getting these episodes out, as you see. By a couple, there's been a couple throwbacks already this year, and a lot of solo episodes. Um, it's been, it's not been, it's been a struggle getting guests. It's just getting guests every week on top of my full-time job. And if you follow Schnabel Studios, you see that we've been doing a lot of freelance work and a lot of, of video and photo work 
outside of the the full-time job I already have. So finding time between the full-time job, the freelancing stuff, and then other things, you know, just being able to go and I'm big into fitness. I work out a lot. I play a lot of basketball. I do a lot of that stuff. So like being able to fit between all that, it's just tough to always get down, sit down, get a guest, find time, um, give them preparation, get my preparation, all that. It's a lot of work and I want to continue doing it. And I have people that I'm talking to to come on, um, but it's just kind of a lot of work to get in. So when I can, I will get guests. But I appreciate people listening to the solo episodes. I appreciate that I'll put people to sleep, that people want to hear what I have to say. We've had some good downloads. The solo episodes have actually done better than the interview episodes, which has been like, it really just like, it, it makes me so happy to see that <laughs> the success of this, the solo, just me talking um, has done so well. And I think a little bit of that has to do with a lot of the solos are about baseball. And there's a lot of people that love baseball. And I probably don't know anything in this world better than I know baseball. So I I was a coach, I was a player, I worked for a lot of teams, I freelance one for one right now. So um, I do know baseball really well. But this one's not gonna be about baseball. I just wanted to take that moment before we hit the before we hit the intro card. I wanted to take this moment to say thank you, everybody that's listened. Thank you, everybody that's subscribed. Thank you, everybody that that has liked a post that is reshared a post that has commented on a post that that checked us out even just went to the page, whatever it is. We want to, I, I appreciate everybody that's done it. I really appreciate you guys being out there. And whether it's a thousand people, there's 10,000 people, or whether it's one person, I love doing this. So any, any person I can reach that, that enjoys this work, that's who I'm doing it for. So thank you guys so much. So I thought all that out of the way. Let's get into the hip hop stuff. Let's get into the list. This is Mad Props. <laughs> This episode and getting it out, and nothing has happened. I like I said, I think it's probably dead. Um, the Drake and, J- and Drake and Jay Z, the Drake and Kendrick beef. So in a little bit, we're going to go into that. We're going to talk about you know major beefs in hip hop history. We're going to talk about where where we think this might even rank in that. Um, we're going to talk about like my thoughts on the songs, on who did better, on why I think the result happened the way it did, even though even though I think it was pretty one-sided, it was kind of a mess. So we're going to go into that. We're going to talk more about that. Um, and yeah, we're just going to go over the whole beef, kind of go dive into it, and you're going to get my thoughts on it. These are my complete thoughts. I have subjects, but they're, it's going to be complete thoughts that are off the cuff, things I've just been thinking of. This isn't, you know, something I wrote down to try to get out there. This is going to be completely off the cuff coming up. Um, but I want to start with a list because the lists have done really well. We get a lot of engagement on them. People really seem to enjoy them. Um, sorry if I'm looking, not looking directly at you if you're watching, but I came up with a, uh, I was watching a couple things and talking to a couple people. And uh, in one of my group chats, I threw out, actually a couple of group chats, I threw out a question. Um, what is a rapper that fell off? And we kind of talked about it, and then someone said, do you mean like One Hit Wonder and never came back? I mean, I, I, no, I wanted to know, I wanted people to name a rapper that was like legitimately big and fell off. And it's because one of these rappers that's going to be on this list, I kind of fell into a rabbit hole of listening to a lot of their own old music and some of their new music, and... uh yeah, and, and that's kind of what got me into this whole thing. So when I listened to that, and I was like, dang, XYZ fell off. I sent out that text like, remember this, blah, blah, blah. Because they said something about another rapper, and I was like, and then, and then that got the whole conversation going. So I was like, you know, I really want to do a list for this week. Now, this top five, it's tough because it could have been a top 10. It could have been a top 15. Um, in the order, I'm not really sure I even like the order I have it in, um, but we're just going to go with it. I don't really care. I'm going to give you some honorable mentions. I'm going to 
break it down. I'm going to talk about why I think they fell off or why we know they fell off. Um, and even the honorable mentions, we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, yeah, so let's just get right into it. The top five rappers that fell off. We'll go with some honorable mentions. Um, by the way, if you disagree with this list, if you think like, you know, you have another rapper that I missed or you have another artist that I missed, drop it in the comments below. Let's talk about it, right? Like, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're listening or if you're watching, drop it in the comments. Let's talk about why I missed it or who I missed. If this order's off, whatever, drop it. Um, so the top five rappers. So let's go into the honorable mentions first. So this is in no order. This was, I had a list. I broke it down to, uh, I think like 15 or something like that. And then what do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I broke into the last 12 and five made the list and the seven didn't. So this is the seven that didn't. The first one, and this came up in every group chat, and I agree, was Iggy Azalea. I think she, I, I'm not going to go too deep into her because like, I don't know the full reason. I just know what I think. I think she just kind of made rap pop, and she tried to be someone she wasn't, and people clowned her, and she kind of just fell off that way. I think there was also something with T.I., I'm not going to put any speculations out there, but she's going to be my first honorable mention. I probably won't go as deep into the honorable mentions because I really want to go deep into the top five list. Uh, the next li person I have on here is Macklemore. Um, Macklemore just came out with a song that's doing really well. It's, it's not a bad one, but the reason he fell off in hip hop was the Grammy Award. So for anybody that doesn't know, he went up against, was it Good Kid Mad City? It was the Heist versus Good Kid Mad City. And the heist won, which is fine, right? It's not correct, but it's fine. The heist won um, rap album of the year, which is a, so perfectly named, the heist over Good Kid, Mad City, which, in my opinion, is like one of the best rap albums to come out in at least the last ten years, if not if not longer than that. It's probably if you made a list of top rap albums of all time, Good Kid, Mad City might find itself on there. That's how good that album is. And it lost to Macklemore in the heist, which had a couple of radio hits on it, but nothing really crazy. Um, so that wasn't the part, though. Like, whatever. He lost. He says he doesn't even think he should have won. Whatever. But it was when he texted Kendrick Lamar that he should have won and posted it to social media is when the hip hop community was like, we don't respect that. Like, if you don't think you should have won, that's fine. If you want to text Kendrick and tell him that, that's fine. But then to post it on social media for your own clout, that's just not something you do in the hip hop community. Like, I don't even know if you should apologize for it. Like, it's not, you aren't like, you didn't do it, right? People voted for it. And whether the voting's right or wrong, like, it's not you that did it. So if you want to apologize for that, that's fine. Getting clout off of it and saying, like, look, I don't even think it. Look, I texted him and showed him I don't think it. That's not right. So after that, uh, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis split up. Ryan Lewis was his producer. He was doing stuff on his own. Nothing was ever the same as the heist. Nothing was ever thrift shop. Um, can't hold us. All, nothing was any of those. So he had a couple other he – he did have some hits after that, but there were more radio hits and not really – accepted in the hip-hop community so macklemore is another honorable mention um this one's tough so like some of these are kind of tough because i don't know i don't know the best like some of them it's like they kind of did it to themselves so fetty wap is on here so for people that are listening that don't know fetty wap which it could be possible at this point i mean trap queen and that whole album came out in 2014, I think, or 2015. Maybe. I think it was the end of 2014 that that came out. So that's 10 years ago. Um, he came out with his album, had uh, 679, had Trap Queen, had, uh, oh, what was the other one? Um, the one that Drake remixes. All I want to do is, but, yeah, I, I don't remember the name of it. But anyway, he had a bunch of songs on there, huge songs, like all over the radio, all over all, all over everyone's phone any party you walked into at the time there was something fetty wap playing fetty wap was all over the place 
then he just disappeared basically like he had released some music nobody really listened to it never really made any push so Fetty Wap had a couple things that happened to him the first thing that happened to him when he was on I think he was touring or he's about to tour he got in a motorcycle accident and got injured so he couldn't tour which when you are an artist that just makes your name and you're about to go on your tour and that you can't go on your tour that's going to really affect your sales and stuff like that but that's not why he fell off. <laughs> Let's get it straight. That's not why he fell off. Fetty Watt fell off because he never left his hometown and he just got too involved in his hometown. Like he became like the leader of the group in his hometown and he kept getting arrested and he kept getting involved with the wrong people and he just kind of threw his career away because he couldn't move on from where he was. Like, even if he wanted to stay in New Jersey, which is where he was from, he could have moved to a different part of New Jersey. He could have figured himself out in New Jersey. I mean, he never did. He always went back, and uh, that's kind of what happened to him, man. He just kept going to jail, kept getting in trouble. The mutant, you know, once a couple of years off, and we're going to get into another artist like this, a couple of years off, like, just people kind of don't care anymore unless you're going to drop something that's, gonna blow us away like Kendrick Lamar just like five years between albums which is ridiculous and I don't like that but every five years he drops something that you can you can invest your time into and brings you back to him and I know a lot of people think his last album wasn't as you know people think that his last album was a flop I personally don't I think there's some good stuff on there I think it was just different approach and people didn't expect that approach but anyway it doesn't matter if you're gonna wait that long you have to come out firing you know you can't wait that long and then come out and put out a dud and that's what he kind of did so um yeah so Fetty Wap's kind of gone um so here's one that I'm not going to go too far into because a lot of people already kind of consider this they a lot of people consider it the top fall off but I'm not going to lie on my top five list I didn't want to go this like I didn't want to go this route basically um Ja Rule being on there, Ja Rule and 50 beefed, which we'll talk about in a little bit. After that beef, Ja Rule kind of disappeared for a little bit. He did a bunch of different things, like TV shows and stuff like that, but nothing ever really worked out. Um, so Ja Rule, I put on here because he just kind of fell off. This was 20-something years ago at this point that this happened, right? So um, another one I have on here is Ace Hood. Now, people listening may not know who Ace Hood is, um, he came up with T-Pain, Rick Ross, um, Akon, that whole group, DJ Khaled, they kind of all came up together. They were the Florida scene. Um, DJ Khaled was from Miami. Rick Ross may also be from Miami. He's from somewhere in Florida. Um, but they all kind of came up together. And Ace Hood was on everything, man. He was on all the... T and T-Pain was a part of that. He was on all... And T-Pain might should probably be on the honorable mentions too, but he kind of made up. Musically, he should be on this list. Fame-wise, he, he, he brought himself back. Anyway, so maybe he could be on this list too. He's not on my list, but if that, <laughs> if that doesn't say anything. Um, but Ace Hood was in a lot of stuff. Then he had an absolute smash hit, Bugatti, which just blew up the radio stations. I think that was like 10, 10 to 15 years ago now. He blew up the radio stations. Um, but then after that, never really heard of him. Um, he, I don't consider him a one-hit wonder because he had other hits. He had Top of the World. He had, uh, I think he was on the song I'm So Hood with T-Pain and uh, this Khaled song as well. Um, he was on a lot of that stuff. So he was very big and then kind of fell off when they all went their separate ways and, and, and MMG kind of put their stuff together and Khaled kind of went on his, I don't know what the hell DJ Khaled even does, but whatever he does, he did it on his own. And T-Pain went kind of solo and didn't do anything with these guys. Akon went off and made Convict and stuff like that. Another guy that could probably be on this list, by the way, Akon. But Akon is a different story. I wouldn't put him on this list because he didn't fall off musically because he just tried making it and didn't work. Dude went to jail. Dude did humanitarian work. Um, tried to build his own city. I guess I can get into that in a second, but maybe Akon could be on this list. Akon tried to build like this whole, the whole city based. It was called like Acontopia. I don't remember what it was called, but it was something like that. It was something with his name in it, and it was supposed to be futuristic, and it was supposed to end hunger and water 
deprived and stuff like this in, in Africa. And it, like 10 years later or whatever, it's just like a rock in the middle of, in the middle of an open field because nothing has really been done. Um, you can look more into that. You can research that if you want to get better idea of what's going on with Akon. But Akon, um, I guess he kind of fell off musically as well, but he he was one of those. He was kind of like Fetty Wap, went to jail a lot, but then he did a lot of humanitarian work. He tries to get clean water. He did the solar power. I think it was also in Africa because he is from Africa itself. He like paid to have all these solar panels installed in Africa so these, these people can have lights because they had no light after dark, like other than fire, like stuff like that. So he's done a lot of, he kind of went in a different direction, which we'll get into the rules of the top five. When we get to the top five, I'll get into more of the rules because I kind of skipped over that. So I'll get into more of the rules when I get to the top five. Uh, I have two more here. Um, I put Lupe Fiasco on here. He's usually on people's top five list. Um, I guess he is somebody that fell off. I didn't know if I wanted to put him on the list or not. I know he did have a fall off, but I just didn't know if I wanted to put him on the list. So I put him on the honorable mentions. I had people more that I wanted to talk about. Um, and th- I guarantee you, number five, people are going to be like, dude, Macklemore should have been number five instead of who I'm going to put there. Whatever. I don't care. Uh, and the last one I have is The Game. I love The Game. Uh, the documentary and, uh, what is it, Doctor's Advocate, right? Uh, those two albums are, are legitimate, like gold mine albums, great stuff. Uh, he just hasn't really made anything worthwhile in, in a while. And that's the definition of falling off, right? Like when you're making music and it's just not the same, or it's just not doing it for people anymore, that's falling off. And that's kind of what he's done. So those are just my honorable mentions. So before we get into the top five list, there's a couple things I want to say. One, you heard me say it in there about one-hit wonders. These are not people that had one hit song and then disappeared. For example, like Roddy Rich, who I know had a couple of songs, but he kind of just had one hit and hasn't been anywhere. He's also pretty young at this point. Like his album could drop tomorrow and then I'd be screwed putting him on the list. Um, but I'm not going to put him on there. I didn't put like Chamillionaire on there who had Riding Dirty and that was it. Um, I didn't put any of those types of people on there. Even if it was like a two hit wonder, I try not to put him on there. Um, because I just don't, I wanted somebody that was like legitimate. They dropped an album. Everybody heard it. They dropped the mixtape. Everybody heard it. They dropped this. Everybody heard it. Um, not just somebody that's like, yeah, they had like three good songs. I remember that. And I don't remember anything after that. So that's, that's that was one of my rules. Another one is no old heads that just kind of got older. Like people love to say Eminem fell off. People love to say Nas fell off. People love to say these guys fell off and it's, they're like, they're 55 years old. Like, (laughs) what are we doing? Like they didn't fall off after a while. It's just not going to be the same. It's not, it's, it, there's a difference between someone that's fallen off and there's somebody that, I mean, Eminem has how many hit records, how many hit albums, how many Grammys, how many years did he do it? You know, like it, it's just, it's really not the same. And I understand these guys still drop music and it's, it just doesn't hit like it used to, but some of it's because they just don't change their style. Some of it's because they're doing other stuff outside of it. Some of it's just because they're, they're, they're older and they don't want to keep doing it. And they do it for their fans. So I don't consider – I didn't consider any of the old heads. People love to say Dr. Dre. I'm not going to put him on this list. Eminem, I'm not going to put on this list. Uh, Nas, I'm not going to put on this list. Like those guys I just won't put on this list. Um, another one is like super underground people. And I know the, this person I'm about to use as, as an example isn't as much underground, but like Royce to five, nine, I, first of all, I think Royce five, nine has gotten better as he's gotten older, but a lot of people when I was doing my research said he fell off. I don't think he, it's not that I don't think he was super big at any point, but I don't think he was to the same status as a lot of these people were going to mention. What I mean by that is he was never a global superstar for rap. Like in the rap community, he was a huge name. But in the music community, like he's not going to, you'll see he's not going to match up to a lot of these. Maybe number five, but I think even number five had like radio hits. 
And I don't think Royce the Five Nine released actual like radio hits unless it was something with Eminem. And it could have been Renegade, but Renegade he was taken off of it because of the beef, and he gave it to Jay Z, or Eminem gave it to Jay Z or whatever. But anyway, um, so that was another one I didn't do. And my last one is like the new age SoundCloud rappers. Um, I didn't add any of those guys because. I think some of them were legit. Like I think Juice World is was rest in peace was like legitimately going to be a superstar. Um, obviously, like Yachty and and guys like that that are still around, they may not be at the same level, but I think that was just such a trend instead of like a rapper coming up, they just all jumped on a trend, and it really blew them up and then the trend kind of died like soundcloud ended up and soundcloud's not really like a thing anymore right like people don't use it and then all those guys just kind of disappeared because they probably still rap on soundcloud and people were really making their money off soundcloud and like no jumper was created lyrical lemonade was created you know like these things were all created based on soundcloud and then when soundcloud kind of started dying out and had all the legal troubles and all the other dumb stuff that they did and it kind of killed it and then they got bailed out by chance the rapper and, and it was just such a mess that like i i don't consider any of that so even though like yachty's not at the same exact level um i just don't consider any of that i guess the last rule i had too is i try not to add too many people that like got into legal trouble um, and I try not to add any people that could make a comeback. I don't think he will, but uh, the baby I didn't add because he had his he he had his his rants on stage, and you never know. Like he's ha- actually he actually had some some songs that went pretty popular after that. So I try not to add people like that. I tried to make it more fun than that. So without further ado. Let's get into this top five list. If you stuck around this long, I hope you're enjoying because we're going to keep going. So number five, um, I had a lot of trouble with number five. So I went with one that I thought would be fun to talk about. So take this one with a grain of salt. And the rest of them don't. The rest of them I put a lot of thought into. This one I put a lot of thought into as well. Obviously, I could put Macklemore. I could have put Fetty Wap. could have put Ace Hood. Ja Rule, I kept off this list. And people are going to be like, why would you keep This is where I could have put them. Um, I put Rich Homie Quan. Now, for people that don't know who Rich Homie Kwan is, he got really big in the mid-2000s. I want to say 2014, 15. He had a song I can't repeat the title of. And then he was on a lot of other other big singles. He was even on... um, He was even on a song with Lil Dicky, who also could have been on this list. But I just think he went and... He just... He used music to kind of propel his acting career anyway uh he went on uh he was so big that he was on a song with Lil Dicky to show how big Lil Dicky's song can be kind of thing he was on Save That Money who also had Fetty Wap by the way so two guys (laughs) one on the honorable mentions and one on the list um but with with Rich Homie Quan for people don't know why Rich Homie Rich Homie Quan fell off for a, a legit reason so he started talking about Biggie and Tupac and how he thought they were overrated. Um, and then the big one was he went on stage. I think this might have happened before. I think Quan was the one that talked about that. Disregard that first part because I don't remember if that first part's true, but I do know this part's true. He went on stage with Lil Kim and a lot of people from Junior Mafia and they were singing Get Money. And Biggie's song, Biggie's part came up, and Quan didn't know the lyrics to it. And first of all, a lot of people already know the lyrics to "Get Money" by Junior Mafia, but I'm pretty sure it was that combined with the overrated comments that the hip hop community just completely lost respect for Rich Homie Quan. And then his music would come out, nobody would buy it, nobody wanted to listen to it, people didn't want to hear his opinion because they didn't care anymore and he kind of just fell off and now you don't hear anything about rich homie Quan anymore and the stuff that does come out people just don't mess with and 
he's he's gone into the abyss. Could he come back? Of course, he probably could, but I don't think he will. So that's the first one I got. Second one I got. So this is the one that spurred everything. It came on. I was listening to. I, I think it was like. Rick Ross radio or Meek Mill radio or something when I was at the gym and a Hobson song came on and that's what spurred all of this was when I heard the Hobson song and I was like, man, he fell off a cliff. So Hobson was big in the 20, uh, late, like the late 2000s, early 2010s. He got really big. Um, his biggest hit of that was the Ill Mind of Hobson Five, which was just a really, a really, like, different look at hip hop and life as as a whole. Um, and the whole series was kind of just his insane thoughts, which get ridiculous over time. So the reason I put Hobson in here is because I went on to a deep dive of what happened to Hobson, and why he like fell off the way he did kind of and I I enjoyed Hops. I was like I was a very big Hobson fan. Um I really liked his music. Um his first album which was Gazing at the Moonlight, I think it was. I should know all this off the top of my head. I should have notes. But most of these notes I have memorized at this point because I've been thinking about this for a week. Um I think it was Gazing at the Moonlight or Gazing at the yeah, I think it's Gazing at the Moonlight, which had pots and pans and had, um, what was the other one? Uh, my God, I can't think of the other one. The the big one that, the, the big thing that got him is he was on a Pusha T song. He was on Am I a Psycho? And his verse was, Mom, Dad, I'm no longer the boy you used to see. I'm going to line I'm, or uh, change the line. I'm going to hate every human being. I, oh, that verse is that verse is legit. I listened to it again. I was like, yeah, that verse is still as legit as it was day one, and um, that and and that kind of put him on the map. And then he had uh, the gazing at the moonlight. He was he was signed to Ruthless, which was um, Easy E's record label, which is owned by his wife which he blamed why he didn't get big on his first album or his first album mixtape because he was signed to that record label and they paid him garbage and they didn't promote him. They didn't get him any features. They didn't do anything like that. So he blamed them. And that's a big reason for, I think, his fall off is the blame game. Um, he just kind of blamed a lot of people for why he wasn't selling or why he wasn't doing anything, but um, Hot Madness, I think, was the name of the next album. I, I again, I know Raw. Raw was the name of the next album, and Raw was the one that really blew up. It really blew up, and and he had some songs on there that, in, in at least in the rap community, and and for me in the teenage community that we really like, we liked. Like I knew a lot of people that really liked Hobson, and he was kind of the different rapper at the time right like now you get a lot of the nerd rappers and he was kind of that nerd rapper like he wasn't the cool suave guy he was just kind of the dork that became a rapper and and here he is and um lyrically he was he was pretty good like he he had some good good lines good lyrics and stuff like that and he was really enjoyable so I, I, he was really big. He was really, really big at one point. Put it this way. There was a song that Eminem, he was calling out people that he, he was calling out people that he um, inspired. And Hobson was on that list. It was like Kendrick and um, maybe Mac Miller. I can't remember who was on it, but it was like legit names in music. And then Hobson was on there. That's how big this dude was, is he was called out by name, by Eminem, as he inspired him to become a rapper, and now he's nowhere to be found. So why do I think he fell off? So Hobson, Hobson, one, played the blame game a lot. Um, he blamed Ruthless at first, then he blamed um, whoever his partner was at Funk Volume, which was his record label. He started another record label. And it kind of, once you, you, when you're jumping label to label and you're using your own dime and the dimes are running low, 
it just gets tough. It gets tough, and and you just can't keep up with that. I mean, when he was with Funk Volume, he had him and Swizz, which I was never a big fan of Swizz, but then he had Dizzy Wright, who was another guy that was really big for a while, and he had Jaron Benton, who was like a crazier... He was kind of like... You could tell he was inspired from Eminem. Um, it's kind of like a crazier Tyler, the creator, with, with sharper lyrics... Um, but he kind of disappeared. They all disappeared. You could almost say they all fell off because they all just disappeared. But I think when Funk Volume kind of dissolved, and they be, then they had to find other places, and it just kind of ruined the whole thing. So w- number one, I would say is the blame game. Number two for Hobson is he just kind of. I guess this goes into the blame game, but you know he attacked a bunch of different people. Um, and the Illmind Hobson Four, which is like. For people that like hip hop, kind of, that's when we discovered him was Illmind Four. I know that's when myself and Chandler, who we discovered him first, was Illmind Four. Was what we heard. Um, he goes out to Tyler the Creator. He goes after maybe was it Bruno Mars? I should know all these by now. I don't remember. He goes after Tyler the Creator though, which is the big one. Maybe it's not Bruno Mars. I might be thinking of somebody else. But he went after Tyler the Creator. And this is when Tyler Creator was first coming out. He just dropped Goblin, which had Yonkers on it, which was the Yonkers was the song that propelled him into mainstream media. And I mean, look at the careers, right? Like Tyler Creator is making like real artistic music now. And Hobson's still out here blaming people of why he's not getting listens. So it was not maybe the right person to go after, especially because they're music was pretty similar at the time like very lyrical very shock value they kind of did the same things like tyler creator had uh odd future just like cops and had funk volume um they both did skating they both did and it was i think it was lupe or cuddy that was who he dissed because he's ta- is Lupe Fiasco because he was talking about how he can't ollie. That wasn't Bruno Mars. I don't know why I said Bruno Mars. Anyway, so uh, anyway, so um, he just they were kind of on the same wave, and I think it would just been a better idea instead of going after him to try to befriend him or just leave it alone. And that kind, I think that kind of crushed him, and then. I think his fan base just kind of started growing up and realizing like at the time we, you know, his lyrics were pretty sharp. It felt like, but I just don't think the lyrics were as sharp as like Tyler, the creator or some of the bigger names that made it out of there. Um, I think he was a very shock value guy and he jumped on whatever would get the name up, get the name up. And I think when people kind of caught on, they're just like, eh, we'll let him, we'll let him walk. And uh, now, I, I, the last song he came out with was in 2023. It was something. Um, I don't like to call music bad. I, I wouldn't call it bad, honestly. I, I, it's not for me. I don't think it doesn't. It's not the same as what he was coming out with in 2011, 12, 13, whatever year. He did L-4, L-5, Sag My Pants, I'm Here, all that stuff. I think the last thing about Hobson, too, and this is probably the longest I'll spend on somebody because I did the most research into it. The other thing about Hobson is the dude, like, would disappear for four years. And we talked about this earlier in the podcast. You can't disappear for four years when you're still trying to build your fan base. Like even Kendrick didn't do that. Kendrick came out with Section 80, Good Kid, Mad City, and then um, what was uh, the third one? But he came out with three three projects pretty close because he knew like he was still building. Like even though he just dropped Good Kid, Mad City, and it's one of the best rap albums to come out in a long time, he still needs to build his fan base. And Hobson didn't do that. Like he just kind of. He was a little too big for his britches too early on, and, and that was kind of it. So a lot of factors went into his downfall. But he's at number four. <laughs> We're going to move on from Hobson. Let's go to um, one that I don't. I didn't want to put on this list. A lot of people told me I had to put on this list. Um, I feel a little indifferent about it. 
um, but Chance the Rapper. So I didn't put him higher than three because I didn't want to put him on this list at all. I think, I think he gets a bad rap because he went from he gets a bad rap because he started like higher than you possibly can. So Chance had Ten Day, which was a really good project. Acid Rap, which propelled him to stardom. Then he had um, Coloring Book, which changed the music industry. And his first album, The Big Day, was just a flop. It was exactly that. It was a flop. So let's let's go back from the beginning. So 10 Day, um, he wrote, he was on 10 Day Suspension. That's why it's called 10 Day. And it's just, it's really good. It's really deep. Has some really good songs on it. Talking about all this different stuff. Like, he, he's just really artistically expanding himself and really reaching the audience in, a, in such a, such a deep level and that's why i really enjoyed that one so 10 day was really good as the first album he, he, chance means so much to me because kyle and i bonded over chance like that's how we met we met we hung out so we met we, we were cool with each other then we hung out for the first time and we listened to chance the rapper 10 day and chance the Rap, rapper acid rap or i think just favorite song came out at that point and like the rest is history, basically. Like that's how we started our friendship. So, uh, yeah. So it hurts. I, I don't want to put him on this list just because, like, I don't necessarily think he completely fell off. I think he just, I think he just didn't deliver. He can never deliver to the expectation he would have had after Acid Rap. So ten days done. Acid Rap comes out. It's a mixtape. It is like one of the best mixtapes of all time. Like you don't even realize it is a mixtape because it's so good. And and mixtapes for people that don't know were like these free albums that you'd put online to get your music out there. Um and usually you can get signed through it, you can get endorsement deals through it and stuff like that. And that's how you kind of made the money back or or you put your music out there and then you got your money back by touring or opening for somebody. Like it was just a way to promote yourself, but there were so many good features. Um, there were so many good features on 10 day. Like I said, favorite song with Childish Gambino, who he co-signed chance to start. Like that was, a. Uh, that's how I, we learned about him because we saw that Childish Gambino dropped a song with this guy, chance, the rapper. We listened to it like, yo, this is like legit. And, uh, and, and, and then we listened to acid rap and we're like, this might be the greatest thing I've ever listened to. <laughs> and it just played for years on end after that. But, uh, it was, it's considered one of the best mixtapes of all time. If to some people it is the best mixtape of all time. So now try releasing projects after that, you know, like you, you reach such a high, it's such a complete album. It, it goes from having crazy and fun times to having really emotional times to having just these songs that are just pull at your heartstrings to having dope features to discovering new artists, like all this stuff. And now you're going to try to do it again. It's not easy. So then he comes out with Coloring Book and that changed music history because it was the first nominated mixtape. And I believe it was the first mixtape to stream. So I think what they did is they put it on streaming platforms, which got it eligible for Grammy nominations. So it was the first mixtape to ever be Grammy nominated. It was the first mixtape to be available for streaming, all that stuff, which changed the music industry and changed like that's when SoundCloud kind of, I think, blew up for the most part because now you can drop on SoundCloud and get nominated for a Grammy if your music is good enough. And so he changed the game completely with that. Like he, he, he made it so like you can win rap album of the year with a mixtape, which was, I mean, if no ceilings would have a Grammy, right? Like acid rap would have a Grammy. Like there are mixtapes out there. Cabin would have been nominated. Like there's a lot of mixtapes that were better than a lot of the albums coming out before that time. So it really changed music for the better because now all music that's 
that's that's part like the Grammys are supposed to be a, a capsulation of the time period. They don't do a good job of that, which we talked about with Macklemore, right? Like they don't do a good job of that, but they're supposed to be that. So if the best thing that come out's not an album, and that's what everybody's listening to, then or it's on SoundCloud, and then nobody's streaming it, nobody's buying it, like. How are we supposed to know like that is what the number one thing that was out there was? We're never gonna know. So it changed the music industry. Now, Coloring Book was not received great. I thought it had some. I, there's some songs on it that I still listen to. Obviously, No Problem was huge, all over the radio. Lil Wayne, Two Chains on it. It was such a good song. Um, it's hard, it's a dope beat, uh, good lyrics fun lyrics, something you can bump at a party. You can also bump in your headphones. Really good stuff. Um, I had a couple other good ones on there as well. But then Coloring Book came out, or uh, <laughs> The Big Day came out. It was all about his wife. It was all about being married. It was all about his family. And it was not received well. Um, you're talking about Chance the Rapper, the guy, the crazy rapper, the dude that wrote a wrote a mixtape on acid <laughs> the guy that 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 he would have a crazy song then he would pull at your heartstrings and now he's just kind of talking about how much he loves his wife and how great his life is and things that people don't want to listen to from chance the rapper like you may not be able to connect on a level of 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 of, of what he's talking about like you may listen and be like, I can connect with that, but not because I saw my auntie in um, the reflection of my vomit or something like that, like holding my hair back. It's like we've been in a spot where we can, we, we've seen a loved one that's passed on. Like we've been in a spot where we feel like our parents are, are disappointed in us, even at, at my age, like, I'm not in my early 20s anymore or my teens, but there are times that you feel that way. Like, oh, my, my, my parents are going to be disappointed in this. And, like, you can connect on that level. Even if you were married, you didn't connect with how great your life is, how much you love his wife, um, things like that. It just didn't – it didn't – it wasn't chance. You know, maybe it was chance at that time but it wasn't the chance that we were used to getting. And that's kind of why I think each project after Acid Rap, like you're never going to live up to Acid Rap. So now there's one of two ways you can go. You can try to recreate it, which isn't going to be successful, or you can try to change your style to something that's still going to resonate with your fans where you can connect with them on that level, but isn't going to necessarily be the same same content that you put out already so it's not going to be the crazy rap it's not going to be the ass and you're on acid you're on drugs it's not going to be that what can i do to f to continue to capture that part of my audience and, and still connect with my audience in that way that isn't that related to that and i think he just struck out twice like i think he just didn't hit what they were looking for what his fans were looking for i didn't want him on this list because i still love chance the rapper I would say that's why he fell off, though. It's just he – it's not really even his fault. He just made something so – it's kind of the same thing people said about Kendrick for a little bit after – especially after his newest album. They are saying, like, he's he's continuously going downhill. Like, you know, you had Good Kid, Mad City. Then you have Damn, which is, like, almost an artistic masterpiece. Like, it's just such – from cover to cover, just so unbelievably good. But then as you go down, people are like, well, it's not damn. Well, it's not it's not uh, Good Kid, Mad City. It's not the Pimp a Butterfly, you know. It, but when you're making such art, like, try painting it again. It's not easy to do. That's why I have so much respect for Mac Miller. I think Mac Miller was able to change his sound. I, I could do a whole podcast about this. I think Mac Miller is the best artist to ever evolve his sound and evolve it correctly. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into that because we're still, we got two left on this list and I still want to talk about Kendrick and Drake. <laughs> but um, 
I truly think like that he is the best artist to ever do it. Like he he just did it so well. He never really fell off in any way, shape, or form, and unfortunately passed away. Very sad moment in my life. I was a big Mac Miller guy. <sighs> All right, number two. Um, this one I'm not going to spend much time on because if you're listening to this, and you, you probably understand hip hop a little bit. So number two, I have Logic. Um, Logic had a lot of reasons why he fell off, mostly because he just kind of got disrespected by the hip-hop community. I'll just bring up a couple of examples of this. One is him like trying to force that he's half black down our throats and saying the N-word continuously in his music, even though he's a scrawny he looks scrawny and white and I understand you may be half black and I'm not like going to say, dude, you're white. Like that's not what I'm going to say, but like you don't get to decide that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> like he said it once and I think it was on under pressure. He says it and I was like, Oh man, but I understood based on like, the music, like the song, how the song was going. Like it was shock value for sure. I think everybody did. Everybody was like, oh wow, he said that. But like it was part of the artistic idea of the song showing like he can't win because his dad's black, his mom's white. I think it is like he can't win. He's always going to be on that fence because of how his family is. And like, but then when he continuously just did it more and more and more and more. And it's like, all right, we get it. You don't have to continuously shove this down our throats. You don't have to continuously throw this in our face. Like we understand, we understand. Um, that was the first thing. The second thing is he was another one that would disappear for a while and come back. I think he retired like four times in his career. Um, but he would always disappear and come back when he would come back. I mean, he would drop albums that weren't bad. He really would. What was his last album? The one where he's in, like, looks like a rocket ship or whatever. I don't remember what it's called. Um, wasn't bad, though. Did all right. He could probably did good sales. He had a very loyal fan base. And people that were loyal to him listening to this probably hate me right now. But you got to accept the fact. But there is one story that I believe is the reason hip-hop doesn't respect logic in the same way. Um, so Joyner Lucas went on a podcast and talked about how he met with logic's manager or he was hanging with logic's manager and he was going to have this whole album that was the, the number, the number for the suicide hotline was the name of the album. And he was going to make this whole album about it and all these different songs. It was all going to be like going back to like suicide prevention. It was something like that. And he was talking to his, he was talking to, 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 to logic's manager about it. And then he said like two weeks later, a song comes out named the suicide prevention hotline. Like the, the, the number is the name of the song. And it was a smash hit. And he basically didn't, he didn't borrow it. He didn't come up with it. He completely stole it from Joyner Lucas. And, took the whole idea that this man was trying to build his album off of and just grabbed it and took it for himself to give himself the publicity that joint. Think of if he doesn't do that, Joyner Lucas might be much bigger than he is. And Joyner Lucas is legitimately good and legitimately big, but like that propelled lot, like logic performed that at the Grammys. Like he performed at the Grammys. Like he performed it at different events and, it wasn't his idea. He just, he stole it. Completely, completely stole it. And it's just so messed up to do that. And then act like it's all good. And think people are going to accept you. But then complain about this and complain about that. Complain about your life. Like, you got to have some sense of awareness. But So Logic kind of got disrespected by the hip hop community. And I just, I don't think, young, you know, was it, Young Sinatra? One, two, and three, or maybe just one and two. I think it was just one and two, um, under pressure. And what was his other one? He had one more that was a pretty solid album. Other, other than that, he kind of just would retire, unretire, complain, force that he's black down your throat. And 
um, steal from people. And you just, people didn't respect him anymore. And that's the end of that. No one's going to work with you. No one's going to want to, to talk with you. No one's going to do anything with you. And you're just going to fall off. And that's kind of what he did. So nobody really messes with logic anymore. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. My number one. My number one is one of... I I was a huge fan of this artist. Like, I go back and listen to his music to this day from 2008 to 2000, let's say 12, 13. He was one of the biggest artists. Like, one of the biggest artists. And if you don't realize that, like if you if if you're young and you weren't around at the time, or you're really young at the time and didn't really listen to hip hop, or even if you're older and you didn't really listen to that kind of hip hop, maybe you're a '90s head, '80s head, 2000s before this time, whatever. Bob was legitimately one of the top rappers of the 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 late 2010s, early 20 late to early 2010s i would say like 2008 to 2000 i think it's 12 or 13 i think it was underground luxury was like the last album he put out where people were like that's that had headbands on it and like that was the last album he put out that people were like oh yeah this is legit i'm pretty sure it was underground luxury i may have to look this up i may grab my phone and look this up to tell you exactly let's let's do that but bob is number one on my list so, B.O.B., um, who's only 35 now, by the way, so he's still super young, but we'll, we'll uh, go over why he kind of fell off. All right, so 2010 was his first album, which was The Adventures of Bobby Ray. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've said this many times. Many, many times, okay? I think... The Adventures of Bobby Ray. Well, let me get back to my article here. I think The Adventures of Bobby Ray may be up there. And this could be another top five, and then I can definitely tell you it may be up there for one of the best debut albums of all time. I have no problem saying that. I'll read off the track list, and I'll tell you which ones were, like, legitimate hits and stuff like that. Um... But let's let's just go really quick. <clears throat> so in 2007, he releases his first mixtape. Um, Cloud Nine is his second mixtape. Hi, My Name is Bob um, is his third mixtape. Has a couple of good songs on there. Nothing crazy yet. Um, Who the F is B.O.B.? Again, has a couple of things on there. Nothing, nothing worth mentioning. Then B.O.B. vs. Bobby Ray is the next one to come out. That's the one right before his album. And... That one has um, never be far away. Um, Wonderland, given a dangerous Wonderland. That one is that is a really, really, really good, um, really, really, really good song. Really, really, really good album. And it also has, which actually makes it to the album, um, which we'll go over in a second. That one had um, the song, gosh, I should know all this off the top of my head, but I, I didn't think I'd be going this far. I think it's called I'll Be in the Sky, which I think, no, it didn't make it onto the album. So I'll Be in the Sky, which people may know already from B.O.B. Like that was on B.O.B. versus Bobby Ray. And it was actually on one of the ones before that too. It was one of his really, really early songs. And it's one of his biggest hits is I'll Be in the Sky. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, very good, very good. So let's go over let's go over the adventures of Bobby Ray. Don't let me fall is the first album on the song. Banger, nothing on you. Huge radio hit has Bruno Mars on it, right? Big, big time. Past my shades is more of a I would say a deeper track on it, but it's very good. Has Lupe Fiasco on it. Airplanes, biggest song on there. Bed Eye with Playboy Trey and Ti, another one. Really big song. I would say most people probably aren't going to say it's a radio hit, but it, it definitely did make the radio. It was one of the singles. Ghost in the Machine, 
definitely a an underground hit. Uh, the Kids is one of my favorite B.O.B. songs of all time. I just think it's so good. I love it. I can listen to it whenever. I still listen to it to this day. If you haven't heard it, The Kids on uh, Avengers of Bobby Ray, go listen to it because it's... It's good. As you can tell, I'm like, thinking about it, I'm thinking how good it is. Magic, don't have to talk about it. Um, has dude from Weezer on it. It again, one of the biggest songs, maybe maybe bigger than Airplanes. Song Fame, super underground hit. Um I wouldn't say it's a big song from there, but it's definitely it it's it's a legit hit. Um and then Lovelier Than You is there's another song on there too called Fifth Dimension, but it's it I don't know if I would say it was really one of his better ones. But Lovelier Than You is just like it's still used in movies today. It had life when the album came out, had more life when uh what was it, the Adam Sandler? Just Go With It came out, I think it was, that's on there and people loved it, and it's in other movies people loved it, and it, it just really blew up. And then Airplanes Part Two which was like the hidden track, which had Eminem on it in 2000, in 2010, like huge deal. And it's just from cover to cover is literally an album you can listen to like, and you can listen to cover to cover and you'll enjoy every song on there. There's like, there's a song for everybody. You, there's really no, there's really no skips on the entire album. Um, he followed that up with a mixtape called uh, Epic, Every Play is Crucial, which had a song that actually went on to be on a Adidas commercial, which made it get a lot of hits. Um, the lyric was, Eastside on my arm, three stripes on my sneakers, and then they changed it to, no matter what it is, it better be Adidas. But that's not the original line from the song. But that's what they put on to the... That was from that album. <clears throat> Excuse me. It had a lot of... Uh, had the song New York on there, which was uh, <clears throat> like a, it was like a uh, Frank Sinatra remixed beat. And then the, I think the lyrics were the lyrics from New York, New York on there, um, which it was just, again, just really good. Then he did Strange Clouds, which was another smash hit, like, when you when you have a big first album, you need to follow it up with a big second album. And he did that with Strange Clouds, obviously. The song Strange Clouds is on there, which is a really big one. Um, I don't think this is a cover-to-cover -cover one. I, I There's a lot of songs on there. I'm going to go through the track list, and I'll tell you the ones I really loved. I loved Bombs Away. It has Morgan Freeman on it doing the intro and outro. Ray Bands, I think, is really good. This had both of us, which had Taylor Swift on it. Huge radio hit. Huge radio hit. Again, Strange Clouds. Another song, another one of my favorites is So Good by B.O.B. When I was in my feels back in the day, and I would just sit and listen to that song and stare out into the distance. I just loved it, thinking of my future. <laughs> um, Arena, which had T.I. and Chris Brown on it. I really love that song as well. Out of My Mind was a radio hit. I never personally... I, that was always a skip for me. I know a lot of people really loved it. it. Has Nicki Minaj on it? It was just never. It was just never for me. Chandelier is another one I really love. Um, that I don't know. I didn't really get radio play or anything like that. And then <laughs> here's another one um, that was one of my favorites. Again, didn't really get a lot of. Didn't really get a lot of play, but Castles with Trey Songs. It was just, it, it really was like, it's like super poppy, but Trey Songs is on the hook. It's just, it, it's really an earworm. It's an earworm. That's what I'll call it, an earworm. I'm not even like explaining why I like these. I'm just like, yeah, dude, it was really good. It was really good. <laughs> um, so the last one he had before he really fell off was Underground Luxury, which wasn't as good. I know that had headband on it. Had John Doe, which is a if it's one I believe it got radio play, but it's a really good one. Um it's about drug use. Really good. Um We still in this B, try not to curse. We still in this B um was another one big time. You know, we went to any time you went to a party. We still in this B. We still in it. 
We still in this, yeah, we still in this. And turn it, turn around, try another down. Yeah, oh man, that was everywhere you went, any party you went to, um, any party you went to, that that's what you heard. So, so that was in 2013. Okay, so I was I was almost there. So 2000, well, 2008 is when that first mixtape came out. But if you're talking albums, it's 2010 to 2013. After that, he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven albums. Seven albums. Some people that know B.O.B. and just heard me listen to all and like listen to me talk about all that is sitting there like, wait, B.O.B. had seven more albums after this? Seven albums. Obviously no hits. <laughs> Obviously no hits. Um, for I mean, most people know what happened to B.O.B., he he's a flat earther. He is he just dug into conspiracy theories, and he'd rather use his platform to dis, try to discredit people about his conspiracies than he would to continue to make music people enjoy. And that's kind of just what happened to him. Like he made a diss track to Neil deGrasse Tyson. Like that's not gonna get you. <laughs> it's not gonna get you anywhere, man. Like you gotta, you gotta pick and choose your battles, and you can come out publicly, and and, and you can be as crazy as I mean, look at Kyrie Irving, man. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying Kyrie Irving's crazy, but he does, he's flat earther, he's a conspiracy theorist, but he's still relevant because he doesn't go on the court wearing a jersey that says the Earth is flat. Like when it comes to what he needs to do, he doesn't, he does it pretty damn well. Now a lot of people are going to go in the comments and be like, well, Kyrie Irving didn't play with the Knicks a lot or the Nets <laughs> didn't play with the Nets a lot. And it's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. I got no argument there, but he does when he does what he has to do. He does it very well, which B O B when he had to do what he had to do, didn't do it as well. And in his songs, he tried to use it as a platform to 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 go off on the freaking crazy things he talked about. Maybe some of the stuff he's right about doesn't matter. Like, I don't love the song so good because you're sitting there talking about conspiracy theories. But we all saw it was coming because in Strange Clouds, that first song with Morgan Freeman, like, it's about conspiracies. And it's really good. But when you're dropping whole tracks about it, that's when it gets... I'd rather hear about your come up. I'd rather hear about, 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 you know, your life. I'd rather hear about the stories you tell. I'd rather hear about just your lyrics. I want to hear you be lyrical. So, B.O.B. is only 35. So, you know, tomorrow he could drop an album and we're like, dude, this is legit. But, I mean, he's dropped seven albums since <laughs> Underground Luxury in 2013 and he hasn't done it yet. So, it's, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm just looking at some of these other ones. I mean, this one's called Psychedelic Thoughts, and I actually think this is a combo album. I don't think this is just B.O.B. Plain Jane. Yeah, I mean, Ether is the last one you can click on, even. And Four Lit, I do remember Four Lit being... Not a big al a big song, but I remember that single... I think he had Big Crit on here, who was fairly new at the time. Yeah, four lit with Ty Dolla Sign and Ti, and that was kind of like it was it was a it wasn't like it was a big song, but it was a, a solo off of it. And that's yeah, Bob Man. That's my number one. And he fell off just because he decided his conspiracy theories were more important than his music, and didn't care to continue it. So. Um, yeah, so that's my top five. It took the entire the entire hour. Um, I do want to get in some thoughts about Drake and and and, and Kendrick. So I think I still I'm still gonna do that. Um, I was thinking of making a part two, but I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna roll right along. So let me close this off and we'll we'll go. I'm gonna pull up some stuff here about Kendrick and T.I. so I can go off of names and not just be like that, this round, that, 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 that. So uh, for people that don't know, I don't know where you've been, but um, Kendrick and, uh, Kendrick Lamar and Drake finally popped. So Kendrick and, and Kendrick and, um, 
Drake have been kind of jabbing at each other back and forth for years. Um, they've been, it's been kind of like a subtle, a subtle jab or a subliminal jab back and forth since probably 2012, 2013. Um, from what I read, because I, I got deep into this. So, like, I'm a pretty good person to talk about it. I got deep into the whole history of it. Into I listened to each song, like, a thousand times, trying to think of what I thought was was better, like, where the missteps were, all that. Um, so we won't get too deep into the history of it, because it started a long time ago, and these guys would take jabs back and forth at each other. Um, when it really pushed to a point where it happened a lot was after the control verse by Kendrick Lamar on Big Sean, Big Sean's song where he called out like everybody. He called out Drake. He called out Cole. He called out Big Sean and everybody in the rap game. He called out by name. Um, just saying like, listen, I respect y'all but I want to murder y'all when it comes to lyrics. Like I want to be better than every single person in the rap game. And people looked at it as like, yeah, it's competition. Like I'm going to, it's like when you're playing any sport, right? Like you're, you're cool with the person off the field, but on the field, you don't even want to know their name. You know, it's just a competitive nature. And, uh, that's everyone took it fine. Except for Drake. Drake hated it. Jake said he'd rather make music that resonates for a while than be a shock rapper. So he called Kendrick a shock, a shock rapper. And there was a lot of different subtle things. We're not going to go into all of them because there's a lot of them back and forth for years and years and years. And then, um, then Drake made two person shooter with J Cole and, and himself basically saying they're the top two in the game and Kendrick was like, well, you think that's true, then I'm going to uh, I'm gonna come out here and just re wreak havoc. And he came out and he did a song. Uh, he went on. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I, I should know this stuff without my head, but there's so much that goes into this. I'm looking at the songs right now. He went on to uh, Future and Metro Boomin's um, record and obviously dropped the Mother F, the Big Three, It's Just Big Me. There's a lot of other disses in there as well. Like, it wasn't just that diss that was in there. Um, there was a lot of different things that went into that, and that's what started it all, uh, like, to the point we're at now. So then after that, um, J. Cole dropped a the seven-minute drill but then apologized for it because he didn't want to be a part of it, which there's a lot of reports that um, Schoolboy Q saw J. Cole after a festival and said, you don't want to be a part of this. Like, it's not really about you. You should just bow out now. Like, Kendrick's going to go for the kill, and you're just going to be a bystander that gets taken out kind of thing. Um, it wasn't about Cole at all. It was about Drake. Like, Kendrick wanted to go after Drake. So he bowed out and he said sorry, basically, and, <laughs> and that was the end of that. And then, um, then it really started with LeBron James tweeting that Drake just dropped the best diss album he's ever heard <laughs> in a tweet. And people are like, "Is he lying? Is he telling the truth?" And then Push Ups leaks, which um, to start off the whole thing, Push Ups was was solid. Push Ups was really good. I think he had a lot of really good points. Um, he definitely called him out in a lot of big places. Uh, the beat was really good. The flow was really good. He never... And I was thinking about this with Back to Back. I, I He called out Rick Ross. He called out Metro Boomin. He doesn't call out Future by name. I don't think in any song... Now, this I could be completely wrong on, and please let me know in the comments if I am. I don't think any song Drake did in the dissing, he ever calls Kendrick out by name. And what I mean by Back to Back is he never calls Meek Mill out by name in either of the songs that he dropped. By the way, in back in, in, with Back to Back, must we not forget that the first one was a snoozer. Absolute snoozer. Which is very important to remember when I'm going to get into the rest of this. 
because back to back was really good, but the first one was not great. And we all remember like, oh dude, it was called back to back. He dropped two mixed he dropped two diss tracks in a row. But he didn't really because the first one wasn't that good. So like, yeah, he did, but if he would have stayed with the one, he would have lost on spot because it, someone probably told him like, dude, that was weak. You need to do something else. And he did back to back, which was crazy. So he did push ups. It was really good. Good flow. Good beat. All that stuff. And then he comes out with Taylor made freestyle, which was kind of whack. It was a AI Tupac and an AI Snoop Dogg, AI written mess. Um, I didn't think I, I if you've, been following the whole beef it kind of disappeared into the abyss because it just wasn't that great it wasn't it was weak which again he did back to back right he did that push-ups in the tell me freestyle before kendrick even got a, a diss out there and the first one was good so it's the, the opposite of back to back the first one was really good push-ups was really good and taylor made freestyle was kind of weak Okay, so um, then um, Kendrick drops Euphoria. Oh, by the way, was this a song? Hold on, sorry. Was this a song? Yeah, Like That was a song by Metro Boom. I, I was thinking it was Like That, but then I was thinking Not Like Us. It's like, I know it's not like us, but let's get back to it. So then Euphoria drops, and oh, random Tuesday morning, Euphoria drops, and... Kendrick went in and this is before he's really even talking about a lot of the facts that he's found out. Um, you can tell he has stuff that he's dropping subtle hints about what he would go into that you can understand as a listener, but you'd really understand after if you were the person he's going after. Um, and he, you know, I think the hardest line, I think honestly the hardest line of any of these I would say the hardest line of any of these songs was in Euphoria when he's like, I got a good child to raise, but you ain't know nothing about that. That was the, I don't even know how to, it's just like, when I heard that, I was like, oh my God, he's going for the neck. And he did go for the neck. It was ridiculous. It was insane. The whole song is so good. He takes, he's not taking jabs. He's, Oh yeah, he's taking jabs. He's he's not. That was a that was a haymaker. That was after you land the jab, 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 jab. You go for the big hit. That was the big hit. Um, and then he kind of just does that for the rest of the song. There's a lot of swings. Then goes back to jabbing. So you know, Drake drops push ups and Taylor May freestyle. Kendrick drops Euphoria to like kind of subtly hit 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 hit. Then. Kendrick goes back to back himself and drops 616 in LA, which was also really good. I will say 616 in LA, you get more, you get more of what, like those, the subtle things he was talking about in Euphoria, you hear more of. Euphoria is definitely a stronger tape than 616 in LA. Um, they were both really good, but I think of, I, th I think of the two, Euphoria will stand out over time. Like you peep that 616 and I may actually get swept under the rug when you're remembering the songs. Like it's not going to be one of the ones you go like, remember when he dropped that? You're going to remember when he dropped back to back. You're going to remember that he dropped at 616 in the morning. You're going to remember that. Um, there's a lot of subtleties in that one as well, but you're not going to really remember the song. You probably don't even remember how it goes really, because it just wasn't the strongest Kendrick effort. Had a lot of really good stuff more jabs he's just taking more jabs more jabs more jabs then drake finally responds with family matters it talks a lot about you know the the abuse with his wife he says that his manager is actually his son's uh, his son's dad all this stuff um really honestly family matters was a lot of heavy blows from drake a lot of heavy blows like it could have really really shook up the whole thing but then Kendrick Lamar was like, I'm not even going to let to get, the, it's not going to get time to breathe because he releases Meet the Grams 20 minutes, 20 minutes after Family Matters, 20 minutes. 
it's such a st- strategic move. And this is one I really, this is probably the part I really, really want to get into. Um, I guess we could say then he dropped Not Like Us after that. So he went back to back again. And Not Like Us was the, the death blow. But let's, let's go step by step. So Meet the Grams comes out 20 minutes after. One thing, it, that release time is so smart. Because if he doesn't release it soon after and gives Family Matters more time to marinate, it may actually take him out a little bit because Drake does come in. It's, you know, Drake makes catchy music, right? And he's coming in with a lot of body blows, a lot of body blows. But he doesn't land the punch like he thinks he does at the end because the real punch is the counter of releasing a diss track very similar to the one he just released 20 minutes later. Now, a lot of the stuff in there, there's some things in there that didn't end up being true um, and stuff like that. But just the fact that that song came out and took everyone's mind off of Family Matters means that song still works. So... Even if Kendrick drops that song, knowing some of the stuff may not be completely true, the fact that he does it so quickly after and takes the steam out of Drake's song, it kind of changes the whole dynamic of of the blows that he just put because instead of landing the final hit, Kendrick counters and now he's hitting the body shots. He's hitting the body shots. He's hitting the shock value. He's getting people to talk about it. That's what I mean. Like some of the stuff in there was shown not to be true, or at least it doesn't look like it's true. But there was so much shock to what he said, it took everyone's eyes off of, even if the stuff is true that Drake said, it took everybody's eyes off it. And then Kendrick follows Not Like Us, which is like a club banger diss song. I wouldn't say it's above, but it's 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 like hit 'em up where you can you might hear it at the club. Um, I don't think I'd put it in the top five all time. It might be. It was definitely the killer blow. It was the knockout punch. Um. Well, let's just think. I mean, you got off the top of my head. I could think of hit 'em up, which is probably. Number one or two, and then Ether is probably the other one or two. Um, Go to Sleep was a big killer blow that was from Eminem and uh, had DMX on it, which for people that don't know, that was the 50 and Ja Rule. That's something we're probably not going to get to was like other beefs. Um, I guess we can compare them a little bit. But 50 and Ja Rule, which is one of the most famous ones, Brought in a lot of different people. And when Go to Sleep came out, it had DMX on it, who was supposed to be cool with Ja Rule. And like, it was a big blow and kind of ended the whole beef because everyone was like, dude, they got your own people to come out and make this songs against you. And that was kind of it for Ja Rule. Um, there's God, there's more. I just can't think of any off the top of my head right now. It, it may be up there, but it's just it's <laughs> catchy, memorable. It was a big blow. But if that wasn't enough, and people said like, "All right, Drake, you should call it quits now because you may you may have lost with this one. Like you're not going to keep up. It's it's clear that you're not going to keep up." But Drake's like, "Nah, I got this." And he comes out with the heart part six. And that was the actual final blow, in my opinion. Like, I don't think we're going to see any more songs from this because that song was just so poorly executed. Um, Drake went... He went into defense mode, which is always 
you should always be on the defense while doing body blows, right? So that song's not him doing body blows. It's not him going for haymakers. Well, that's actually what it is. It's not him going for body blows. It's him putting up the gloves and then trying to throw haymakers, hoping that one lands and he gets the knockout punch to win the, win the game. And he just kind of, instead of defending while doing it, he left his gloves down and kind of just hit himself in the face. Um, let's, let's break down a little bit of it. So in the first line, he says, the people that fed you your information are clowns. And then two bars later, two bars later, says he's the one that fed you the information. So he's the clown. He then references Mother I, where Kendrick does not say he got sexually assaulted and says that he did get sexually assaulted and then proceeds to make fun of how he's a victim, which especially in this day and age is not the best angle to take on it. Um, but to me, <laughs> it, I, many memes from this, the comments were hilarious, especially under the video when he specifically name dropped Millie Bobby Brown, um, about how he was never sexually attracted to Millie Bobby Brown. Um, I think that's what killed him. You know, all the other stuff, like the defense and, you know, they were all saying, they were both saying things that weren't necessarily right or correct. But when you're trying to defend yourself, when someone calls you a pedophile because of things you've done with underage girls, whether you did legal things or not, like you've done sus things. And someone calls you out and says that. Like, they're going to the extreme, obviously. It's, it's a diss battle. Like, they're going to go to the extreme with it. And then now you, you're like, that's a very, very bad extreme. I need to defend myself. And the way he defends himself is like, I'm too famous for this to actually happen. That's a bad defense. There's been really, really, really famous people that have done this. <laughs> um, so that's number one. One of them... Forever, I mean, the king of pop, man. Michael Jackson, they said, slept with underage boys. Was he not too famous? Like, so there's that. Then when he calls her out by name saying, like, I'm not attracted to her. Like, I get that the internet was saying this. And this is where it really killed him. This is two, there's two reasons. when he. I get the internet might have been saying that. But Kendrick Lamar never specifically said anyone's name. So when you pull a name out, it doesn't look good. <laughs> because no one said anyone about any no one said anything about anyone specifically. I don't care if like the internet said it already. I don't care if you saw it on Twitter. I don't care if if it's like a people know, people always said things about you like that. You can't out yourself in that way. You can't out yourself by saying someone's specific name. It makes it seem like you're like, well, I know exactly why they're saying this, and I'm, I don't like that person. But that person's name was never brought up, and it's like, oh, whoops. <laughs> it's just not a good look. So I think, so the, the big death, that's the one that I really think hit him. And I, I truly think the big, big, big thing was Drake clearly was gasping for air and took everything off the internet. There was like, he was, there was a lot of, the, the, the big thing with this battle that was going to come out of it is there was a ton of misinformation, whether it was taken from online, taken from sources, wherever he got. Oh, wait, the last thing I forgot about, the last thing I forgot about. Hold on. I'll go back to that. Drake said that he and his crew gave Kendrick Lamar 
all of the information that he used. You told Kendrick to fakely say you're a pedophile? That's a bad move. That's a really, really bad move. Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't understand that. Why would you think it's a smart idea to be like, hey, let's leak them fake information. Tell them I like underage girls. That's really dumb. Really dumb. So let's flip really quick back to what I was saying. So there was a lot of misinformation in this. Um, going back and forth, whether it was from Drake's side or Kendrick's side, there was just information that wasn't correct about the other person. And they kind of just kept going with it and kept digging deeper into this misinformation. I think a lot of the stuff came off the internet. And it shows that there's a lot of rumors about there about a lot of people. And I, that's the best place to get the information, right? Like, you can call people, but if they're not going to tell you anything, what are you going to do? You can look for rumors, but if, I mean, where's the best place to look for rumors? It's online. And what I really think killed Drake is he was defending himself as hard as he can. He was reiterating things that Kendrick blamed him for, like, the first line of The Heart Part 6 was the first line of Euphoria, basically. Um about how he's out of control or spinning out of control, whatever. It's the same line, basically. Um, you can say it was a callback to that because he's trying to say, like, oh, he's spinning out of control, saying false information. But, like, and Drake's been known for a long time to be a lyric stealer. Um, but this isn't the time to do that. <laughs> Like, a rap battle probably isn't the best time to steal someone else's bars. It wasn't even brought up, I don't think, they stole bars. But he's been stealing bars since he dropped his first album. Mixtapes, even, probably. He's been stealing bars. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of misinformation. And I think the big death of Drake was he took a lot of his stuff. When he tried to make those blows in the hard part six, they were clearly all Twitter comments. There was nothing from an, a, a confirmed source. I said at one point, um, I think it was before the heart part six or it was either before that for not like us. Maybe, I think it was right after not like us. I said the first person to drop proof of anything is going to win. <laughs> Cause no one knew what was real and what was fake. And there was a lot of people that dropped proof with Kendrick. There are people that dropped proof with Drake as well. And, um, but there were a lot of people that dropped proof with Kendrick. One of the biggest one, or with with Drake, and one of the biggest ones was uh, he talks about how Drake hooked up with Lil Wayne's girlfriend or whatever they were at the time. Well, Lil Wayne was in jail, and someone dropped the interview of that, and it's really sad to watch because you can clearly tell like Lil Wayne really like has a lot of love for Drake. Like he signed him, he came up and like Drake came up with Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne took him under his wing and then let him fly and he became the biggest artist in the world. And when Lil Wayne was at his lowest and in prison, he took advantage of that and banged his girl. And like, who, this is the guy that put you on. This is the guy that made you who, who you are today. Like without Lil Wayne, you wouldn't be there and that's how you repay him. So that was one, when I saw that, I was like, damn, like Drake ain't a great guy, is he? <laughs> but, um, anyway, my opinion on it, I, I think Kendrick won. Um, I know it's technically still going on. I don't think anything's going to drop. I said it a couple times. Now. I don't think you're going to see another drop. I think that's it. I think it's over. Um, I think Kendrick came away with it. It just shows that lyricism really beats ghostwriters and pop music and whatever else you want to say. 
Another opinion of this, though, I don't think this is going to affect Drake the way a lot of people online like to think it will. I still, I think he's just going to be a popular artist. I just don't think he's going to have the same aura around him. Um, much like Jay Z, I mean, Jay Z still was one of the most beloved rappers. I mean, now he's not really someone people look to to get on the album and stuff like that. But like, to, like or 2010s, you know, going into even the late 2010s, he was still a very big name. Um, dropped a lot, a lot of albums and all that stuff. But like, he was still a legend. But he got destroyed by Nas. Like Ether, I think is the best diss track of all time. It takes six seconds to figure out who that diss track is toward. He calls him out by name from the start. Like, from the start. And Jay-Z ended up being fine. He dropped, I think he dropped the blue, all the blueprints after that. Like, he ended up being completely fine. People just knew, like, Jay-Z is not Big E. He's not Pac. He's going to jump on people. He's going to ride whoever's hot so he can sell his album. Um, that's just what he's going to do. But he made himself he made himself a titan in the rap industry because of it. And it worked out for him. And I still I, th- I think the same thing's going to happen with Drake. I don't think Drake's going to go away. I don't think he's going to die I don't th- or die off. I don't think he's going to fall off. I think he's going to release another album and it's probably not going to sell like it used to because all the Kendrick fans aren't going to buy it or listen to it or stream it or however they do music these days. But I think he's going to be fine. I, I, I don't think he's going to get the features he used to. I think that's the biggest thing that's going to come out of this is you're not going to see the features he used to get. You're going to see a lot of different people on there. And Drake's put a lot of people on. So you might see some new artists that you've never seen before. You may see some artists you're like he's working with him. Um, and I'm sure he's going to try to flex and bring on some old heads or some people that were just titans in the industry and be like, look, he's still cool with me. He's still cool with me. And that's just what he's going to do for the rest of his career. Because I don't, like I said, I don't think this is going to end him. I just don't. I think he's going to be fine coming out of this. I think he's going to still be one of the top selling artists. I just don't think he's going to have the same respect in the hip hop world. Like anytime he drops like a, a, so, a semi rap song, people are going to clown him. I, but I, I truly think he's going to be fine. Just not the same features. Uh, that's definitely one that's going to happen. A lot of people are not going to want to feature on his music anymore for the fear they might. Maybe after a couple of years, he comes back and people are like, oh, okay, like he's dropping albums. People are listening. He still has number one hits. I'll jump back on. But for the first album he drops after this, I'm, I want to see how the first albums that they drop go. Like, I want to see what Kendrick's album looks like. And I want to see what Drake's album looks like. And I want to see what the reception is of those albums. I'm, like, again, with Drake, he doesn't even write his own music. So, like, he has nothing to worry about. Like, he can continue with the same ghostwriters. He can get different ghostwriters. Like, he's going to be fine. Like, Jay-Z wrote his own music, and he still made really good music, but he got destroyed by 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 Nas. So where do I think this ranks in the top ones? So let me quickly look up all-time rap beefs. And let me get, like, a little list going um, so I can – all right. So I'm going to go down this list. I'm just going to say whether it was bigger or less. And if I don't know the beef, I won't comment on it, right? So the first one is Biggie and Tupac. It is way, way less. And the second one is Nas and Jay-Z. Way less than both of those. It's not even close to that. 50 and Ja Rule, I think it's pretty close to that. I, 50 and Ja Rule got a lot nastier. Um and it's still kind of going on today. <laughs> like they still don't like each other. Um, but there's no diss tracks or anything like that. I I believe that um, I believe that it actually ended up in physical violence, though. But loose change is is another one of those out those diss tracks that are 
legit, legitimately good. This one says Drake and Meek Mill. This is definitely better than Drake and Meek Mill. I don't even, uh, I don't even remember Dr Meek Mill making an actual diss track. I know he did a lot of stuff on Twitter, but I don't remember an actual diss track. NWA, and I, I'm not going to do that one. That, that one's completely different. 50 Cent in the Game. This one I'll put higher than that. I don't think that one really... It was definitely a feud because of G-Unit, but I don't think it ever reached the... Uh, I don't think it ever reached this kind of thing. Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, I don't know much about, so I'm not going to do it. Lil Wayne and Birdman, I'm not going to put on there. That, that was a completely different thing. Uh, Eminem versus The Source. I'm going to say this one was better. I don't know if it was bigger because that's where a lot of really, really good diss tracks came from, including Nail in the Coffin. Um, I'm going to say this one just because it was Benzino was kind of like, he was like the co-founder of The Source, but he was like an old rapper in his music. I don't even know any of his that actually like came out of it. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to say that. Let's see. Drake and Pusha T. This is bigger than that, but Pusha T's thing was ridiculously big. And let's just, let's end with that because the rest of these are like, none of these are going to be bigger than, none of those are going to be bigger than, than, than this. So that gives it top 10, top 10 vibes, top 10 vibes. I hope somebody else, maybe somebody will respond. It'd be pretty dope, but Anyway, this was a pretty long episode. I kind of made up because last week we had a throwback episode and I wanted to I wanted to release, you know, something fun, something good. The top five list like took an hour. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Again, you can follow us at Mad Props Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter slash X. Um, let us know what you think. Shoot us a comment either on this podcast or go to one of the social media, shoot us a comment on a video that we post. We'll post a video about this later in the afternoon. If you're listening in the morning, listening in the afternoon, it's probably already out there. So go check it out. Post what you think. Um, give us your opinion. We'd love to hear what you think. Um, and give us a follow. Give us a like. Subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe and like this. This Subscribe to the channel and like this uh, video just to help us out, help us get into the algorithm and stuff like that so more people will listen to it, get on their For You page etc etc make sure you follow schnabel studios that is the parent of this podcast um is my production company we are doing a lot of different things posting a ton posting a ton a ton a ton and it's getting a lot of good feedback so i appreciate all that um that is at schnabel studios on instagram facebook twitter slash x linkedin like and subscribe on youtube and you can also find it on tiktok which i'm trying to post more it's just it's difficult because the scheduling thing is very strange um, but definitely follow Schnabel Studios as well. If you missed last week, I had an old episode with Hannibal Burrs. If you missed the week before that, we did a baseball one that had one of the biggest reels we've had come out in a while um, come out of that one, so definitely go listen to that. Thank you guys so much again for joining us here on Mad Props. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the extended episode. I think this might break the record for longest Mad Props of all time, so congratulations for following it all the way through. We will see you next week. Have a great week and weekend. We'll see you soon. See you later. Thanks for joining.